Liquid. A server-side templating language designed by Shopify for building themes and page templates. But what does that even mean? Let me explain. Okay, so every web page on the internet is made up of just three things. There's HTML, CSS, and maybe some JavaScript, but nothing else. The way these three technologies come together is that HTML is like the skeleton or the building blocks of a website. CSS takes care of the styling, so this is where things get arranged and start to look good. And then JavaScript is like the muscles of a website. So this is where things become really interactive. Okay, now if you ever try to build a site from scratch using HTML, CSS and JavaScript, then you already know that it can be quite a bit of work. You have to write all the code, things need to be tested, debugged, adjusted and so forth. And then you only end up with one single page. But if we're talking about an entire website, that could mean multiple pages. Or in the case of an online store, it could actually mean hundreds or thousands of different pages if the store had a ton of different products, for example. And then coding all these different pages would not only be extremely time consuming, it would also be very hard to maintain. Because let's say we somehow managed to create 1000 different files for 1000 different product pages. Just imagine that in the future someone wants us to make a simple change to all of them. We would be busy the entire day just doing the same change over and over and over again on all these different product pages. And of course I don't know about you, but personally, I don't know a single developer who would enjoy doing that. So the question really becomes, is there potentially a better way? And you know what? Now that we talk about it, all these different, different product pages actually look suspiciously similar to me. I mean, maybe it's just me, but they all have a title, a price, maybe some images. So in essence, they're really not that different from each other, right? And maybe also instead of having a thousand different pages with these hard-coded values, wouldn't it be cool if we just had one single template file that works for all the different products? Because then we would just need to create the page once and for the price, the title, etc. We would then need some sort of a dynamic placeholder so that we can grab the right data depending on the product that's currently viewed. And this product data is available on the Shopify backend anyway. And believe it or not, that's exactly what Shopify Liquid is. It's a server-side templating language for building themes and page templates. And you could say it creates a bridge between your HTML files and the data of a store. So that one single template file works with multiple objects of the same kind. In this example, it was products, but of course we could also make the same case for other types of objects. For instance, all the collections are similar, collection template. Or all the blog articles are similar, they all have a title, some content, a date, an author, blog article template. And if you continue that for all the different page types, sooner than you think, you end up with an entire theme. Okay, so far so good. We're 75% there. So stick with me, because now you only need to know about the other two amazing things that Liquid can do beyond just acting as a placeholder for data. And you need to know about the number one misconception that 90% of beginners fall victim to. And frankly, I don't want you to be one of them. So let's get started with the first one. Okay, so beyond just placeholder values or objects or variables, whatever you want to call them, there are two other very important concepts when it comes to Liquid. First, we have filters, which can be used to modify the output of a variable. And then we have liquid tags, which can be used to implement logic. They are also fairly easy to distinguish. So as you can see right here, objects or variables are indicated by double curly brackets. Then filters are chained to variables by using the pipe character. And you can also chain multiple filters if you want. And logic or tags are indicated by a curly bracket followed by a percentage sign. All right, so by now we've already learned that objects or placeholder values are used for plain data output. And one example we've seen was the product title. So in our theme files, that could look something like an h1 element containing the product.title variable. And in the browser or on the website, that could turn into an h1 saying awesome t-shirt, for example, depending on the product we're currently viewing. Okay, now let's say we want to modify the title before putting it out. Then we could use a filter and for sake of simplicity, let's just use the capitalized filter. So we would add the pipe character and then the filter name. And in the browser, you can see that the title is pretty much still the same. But now we get a capital A instead of a lowercase one. And that was because we used a filter. Then lastly, we have liquid tags. And as I mentioned earlier, they're used to implement logic. So this could be something like loops or if else statements. And with that, we could do things like check if the current user is a logged in customer. So then you would just type if customer 
So if this is a logged in customer, then we want to put out an H1 saying, hey, customer first name, for example. And otherwise, so else, if this is not a logged in customer, then we could just say, hey, stranger. And then you would also have an end if tag down below, because whenever you create an if statement, you have to terminate it somewhere. And on the website, we would then either find, hey, Jan, if I was logged in, or I would find, hey, stranger, if I didn't have an account. So just try to break it down step by step, and then it's really not that complicated. All right, awesome. Now you're on good track to becoming dangerous with Liquid. We just have to get this extremely common misconception out of the way. And that is about where Liquid code exists and also where it's executed. I will give you a hint right away. It's not in the browser. And for a fact, no browser in the world has ever seen Liquid code and they wouldn't even know what to do with it. And that is because Liquid code is executed on the server before the page is sent to the user. And we have already seen that in our examples. On the server side, in our theme files, it was product.title. But if we preview the page in the browser, then it's just awesome t-shirt. There is no liquid code anymore. And the same with filters or tags. The browser only gets the result of that computation. And the result is just HTML, CSS or JavaScript, because that's what every website is made up of, remember? But again, there's no liquid code left because all of it was already evaluated on the server side before it's sent to the client, technically speaking. And that's not only very important, it's also a good thing, because when it comes to things like this if statement here, is the current user a locked-in customer or not, then this decision shouldn't be made by the user itself. There would be a big security issue. And only the server should be able to decide if someone is logged in or not. And that's why Liquid is called a server-side templating language because it's literally executed on the server side and not on the client side like HTML, CSS and JavaScript are. And with that, my friend, we have all the pieces together. Liquid is a server side templating language for building themes and page templates. Easy as that. All right, guys, that was a lot of fun and I sincerely hope you learned something new. I will add some further resources to the video description. And if you're interested in becoming a Shopify developer, keep an eye on my website and on free mode there we can usually help people go from absolute zero to their first paying client in just weeks. Link in the description as well. And beyond that, have an amazing day, questions in the comment section, and I will catch you in the next one. Bye.